And we're back with Off the Press. I'm James Berger with Bakersfield, Californian, political uh, uh, reporter for the Californian. And uh, we're here with Wendy Reed, uh, candidate for the 23rd Congressional District. And, uh, of course, my co-host, Russ Johnson, uh, government affairs uh, consultant and uh, former city council member and uh, former planning commissioner who geeks out on stuff just like I do about planning. Correct. But I have to say I am missing Nicole today. Well, you know, we we try not to miss her too much, but yes, yeah. it's it's nice to have, or, or at least let her know that we missed her today. Oh well, yeah. we we can we can let her feel that. No, no, we, it's fun to have Nicole on the show. It's it's uh, that's why we kind of designed the show this way is to have a couple of different voices, and you guys make me look good. Uh, <laughs> I regret I didn't get to meet you, Nicole Potter. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so let's go a little bit more into kind of what it takes, to, what what you're able to accomplish through that that conservancy, because it's uh, you obviously it's it's located out in the, the 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 kind of transition desert areas around Lancaster and and East Kern and and uh, East LA County. Um, what kind of what kind of properties are you preserving, and what what does that accomplish for the community? What, how does this play? We've in? Uh, focused uh, largely on watershed. Uh, okay. projects um, in the desert uh, the watersheds are tremendously important um, people listening might not realize that a watershed is not like a shed on the side of the hill where there's a pump um, for the well a, a watershed is uh, essentially that if a drop of water falls from the sky uh, where does it go uh, from the mountainsides and the hillsides and the lowlands and the rises and falls, where does the water go? And every drop of water within that area is called a, a watershed. So at some uh, line, not an imaginary line, but some real line up along the San Gabriel Mountains is the difference between the Antelope Fremont Valley's watershed uh, to the north uh, and the San Gabriel, you know, rivers and uh, LA rivers mount uh, watershed on the other side, uh, on the south side of the LA basin. Um, So we have focused on those on the Big Rock Wash areas. Uh, We acquired uh, wetlands that were uh, very important to the ecosystem function, uh, in perpetuity ecosystem function of Los Angeles County Park's Devil's Punch Bowl, which is a wonderful area if people have an opportunity to visit it. Uh, They have a great nature center there, uh, small but exquisite, uh, great trails for walking out there. Um, We have also done restoration projects and restoration consulting. So we consulted with the city of Lancaster and assisted the biologists to put together a restoration plan for one of their, um, it's a man-made retention, but it is an expanded uh, natural, uh, you know, basin that that came Mm. off of the Amargosa Creek. Um, you know, we uh, liter- uh, recently just filed for a conceptual area preservation plan uh, to be considered, which would uh, establish um, preservation funding uh, potential for nine or ten miles uh, worth of important uh, wetlands complex. Mm. And uh, this is under consideration by the Wildlife Conservation Board and the California State Department of Fish and Wildlife uh, for approval. And once approved, would then uh, position those lands for acquisition funding by any a- agency. I mean, it doesn't sure. need to be our conservancy. So we like to feel that we're small, but we're mighty. Uh, we've accomplished a lot. Uh, we started the conservancy because we were told that that one of the main reasons land was not being preserved in these areas was because there was not a local conservancy. Uh, That is why the money was going to the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy and essentially, you know, providing trails for Hugh Hefner and the girls next door uh, (laughs) rather than for the impacted communities in Southern Kern and uh, and Northern L.A. County. So uh, we formed the conservancy and uh, it had put uh, tremendous pressure on the actual implementation of mitigation. Uh, We have been able to influence the planning processes both in Kern and in Los Angeles County uh, for mitigation implementation for renewable energies, which uh, provided an a incredible opportunity for the regions. Uh, whether that ultimately is fulfilled or not, 
you know, as anybody's guess. Uh, but but certainly the pr- the pressure was uh, placed by virtue of our existence. And okay. uh, mm-hmm. and and sometimes you just have to ask the questions and uh, and allow you know the the civilization, the society, the government, the people, the community to answer those questions in the best way that we all can. Uh, but somebody has to be out there asking those questions. And I think that's that's been one of my ra- main roles in the community is asking the right questions and forcing people to, to face the realities of, of how they're going to address those questions. So it's obvious you're very involved in the community. You've got a heart for uh, trying to find solutions for folks. Otherwise, you wouldn't have started a Habitat Conservation <laughs> Fund, which is, I'm still amazed you were able to do that. It, that usually takes a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of uh, influence to get that done. So congratulations. Um, but tell me, why Congress? Why did you decide Congress is the place I want to go? Wh- what was it that drove you to that seat? And why to run against the House Majority Leader, such an entrenched incumbent? Well, I think the obvious answer to the last part of your question as to why the 23rd District is because I live in the 23rd District, (laughs) and I would certainly like for the people in my district to have genuine representation. Uh, The beginning of your question, why did I run? Uh, Well, you know, two elections ago, we opened up our primary ballot, and his was the only name in it. We had to write in Raul Garcia. Uh, He barely campaigned. Um, Last election, we had Terry Phillips, who ran as an independent, and I thought Terry was a good guy. Uh, But I think that, um, you know, even if you're not a politician, you need to have a personality. You need to have something that people are going to give you exposure and want to meet you. And, uh, uh, you know, Terry is a very intellectual person. I'm an intellectual person, but I'm also this old musician, and I think I've got the personality. I just really enjoy talking with people. I know that comes as a great surprise to everybody mm-hmm. that I love to talk with people, but I do. And so... Um, I was going to uh, support whomever was running against McCarthy. I decided to re-engage in the process and work on their campaign. And the more that I spoke with people across the 23rd, which goes all the way up into Tulare County. You know, I mean, Bakersfield likes to feel like, oh, it's all here. No, it's not, okay? It's all the way out to Edwards and Ridgecrest and Boron and all the way out to Pine Mountain Club and Fraser Park and down into L.A. County and West Lancaster and Quartz Hill and Antelope Acres and the riding areas. And uh, it's huge up to Porterville and uh, Three Rivers and Whitney Portal, Kings Canyon. So um, it's a huge district. And the more that I spoke with people who were engaged in politics, there just was nobody running. And the more people I met, the more people said, well, you should run. (laughs) I said, oh, don't be be ridiculous, (laughs) right? Um, But you've won won for office before. Right. Oh, no, sir. Okay. No, I've been appointed. I, I, I've been appointed to a couple of things that I've never run, okay. not run for office. You know, I grew up in an age where as a small child under John F. Kennedy, we really were taught civic responsibility. We were taught that democracy is the job of the people who live within the democracy to take responsibility for. Um, but by the time that I was even a teenager, we were watching all of these people just being murdered on television. I mean, it was just terrible. Um, our leaders were killed, our, uh, assassinated, right, murdered. Um, and then we even watched kids in demonstrations being murdered. Um, my mom uh, had uh, an apartment in Greenwich Village, and a block away from her, the total building exploded because people were building bombs, okay? I grew up in a time when they talked about violent revolution, and the Beatles were like, you say you want a revolution, right? You know, but no. (laughs) And I was like, no, this is not fun. This is not what we're supposed to be doing. But I do believe that collectively that was very chilling, And I think that a lot of us who would have had a wonderful role in government just felt that it was dangerous, it was dirty, it was corrupt, 
politics is dirty business and you don't want to be involved in it. So if you're why a now? good person, you don't want to be involved in it. Because I am now 60 years old and I realize the error of our ways. The only thing necessary for evil to prevail is for good people to do nothing. And we have been doing nothing. We have allowed the deregulation of media ownership. We've allowed them to take away the fairness doctrine. You know, we have uh, over and over uh, elected people who uh, have moved everything to the right and allowed the influence of corporations and corporate money to really overly influence our government to the extent that I think people are questioning our election process, our primary processes. Do other people even have a chance? Does their vote even count? We have the lowest participation in voting of, you know, developed uh, forward-thinking countries. Um, we have serious problems because real people are no longer engaged in government. Real people are no longer represented in government. So when you rely on that much campaign funding, okay, people told me, oh, you need a campaign manager. That's $5,000 a month. Oh, you need a fundraiser. That's another $6,000 a month. I'm supposed to have a staff. I'm supposed to hire as employees to the tune of something like ten, twelve thousand dollars a month, plus an office, plus telephones, that doesn't even start with the campaign. That doesn't start with the filing fees. My filing fee was seventeen hundred dollars. To get those two hundred words in the ballot, the candidate statement, cost me nine thousand five hundred dollars for the three counties. Five thousand seven hundred just for Kern County alone. So. In order to represent the people of my district, where I've lived for over 30 years, 710,000 people for two years, I'm supposed to raise a quarter of a million, a half a million dollars, and do that every two years? This is why people like the incumbent don't represent us, because they have to satisfy the people who will give them that kind of millions of dollars in order to attain office and remain in office, and so I don't sell influence. So let's let's talk about that because, you know, you're you're going to get in there. Let's say you're successful and you're elected, you've got to have an issue, right? You've got to have a a purpose, and other than I just want to get rid of the money in politics, because, you know, for someone like me, I've been hearing that my entire life. I became politically aware in the election in '92, watching Bill Clinton and George W. go at it. Uh, I may have even started a little earlier with the Duke Majin, uh, I think it was Duke Majin Bush first race. But um, uh, but you Majin. hear that all, you know, there's <laughs> always that, you hear that message, oh, we got to get the money out of politics. But you also hear the old cliche, mo money is the mother's milk of politics. But there's issues too. And if you look at American politics, it's very issue driven. What, are, what issues would you tackle as Congresswoman for the 23rd District? I really have three components of what I'm focused on. And they are things that resonate across party lines. So the first is to get money out of politics. And we have tremendous moves toward with that. We have a couple of proposition measures in the state of California. We've got proposition measures all across the country. Uh, the advent of the Citizens United decision was really the final straw on money in politics. And 73%, uh, I believe, of the American people believe that Citizens United was the wrong decision and want it to be reversed. So absolutely, if we want a representational self-governance, we need, it is imperative, we need to get money out of politics. We need to move to publicly funded elections. We need to restore the kind of transparency and, and spending limits and provide access. Now, the six corporations that own all of the media <laughs> at this point since the media deregulation probably don't want that to happen because why would they want to give away their resources when they can you know, charge us thousands of dollars per minute? for those resources. Um, so that is job one. The second thing is, I think we really need somebody who will fight for resources for our district. Our district has serious challenges. We have wonderful resources and economic engines, but they are falling into disrepair due to lack of investment. We have infrastructure that needs uh, investment. And as you um, follow, uh, which we have as a nation, 
follow a path that believes that government is the problem, government is not a solution. Government doesn't help anything. Government is always the problem. We need to destroy government. We need to shut it down, make it very small. It's too large. We want to defund all kinds of public services and things that government ha was is, it actually established to do. Okay, the congressional seat I'm running for, Congress was established by the founding fathers in our Constitution to provide for the common defense and the welfare of the people. So those are definitely the concerns of the Congress, and we, all of our districts, send people to Congress. Those congressmen are supposed to be pursuing things that benefit the people of our district. And because they are so responsive to donors, they just don't do that. So I will go to Congress to actually fight for the resources for our district to be able to incentivize technological improvements, to face climate change. First, you have to acknowledge that climate change is real and that it should be a priority, that the drought is not some temporary thing that's going to somehow get better next year because climate always is changing. No, we need to have a systems approach to that. We need to upgrade our agriculture cultural industries and, and incentivize that uh, what, from what the federal mean? government. What we need to upgrade our oil industry and incentivize that and avail ourselves of those profits so that we are not just going deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole of cutting off funding, closing sheriff stations, closing fire stations, eliminating public uh, education, eliminating social security so elders can just, you know, die in the gutter hungry like they used to. And we can go back to the good old days when America was great. You, you, made, a you, know? <laughs> you, you made a comment about upgrading our agriculture system. What, what do you yeah. mean by that? Yeah, there are many things that are already to some extent underway, but would do wonderfully if uh, con our do-nothing Congress, under the leadership of the incumbent that I'm running against, our do-nothing Congress has taken the perspective that these things just should not be helped. They need their budgets cut. They even cut the budgets for the veterans, for the Veterans Administration. Now they're going after their pensions. I mean, it's really bizarre. They just want to starve government so they can give tax breaks to the corporations and tax subsidies to the corporations. We have, in it, more to the point of your question, we have farms in Tulare County that are currently recapturing their methane and using those methane uh, resources that are produced by feedlots and such from their operations in order to run their operations. I met a couple last night that's doing biofuels uh, to extend and expand our, our fuel life uh, of our oil resources. We have uh, wonderful oil resources, but we have refineries that are so old and inefficient uh, that they're literally causing health problems to our people and our children. And why aren't we building new refineries? Because we can't meet the environmental regulations. No, we meet the environmental regulations elsewhere. We can incentivize that. What we need to be looking at are sustainable processes and sustainable wealth for our district over the long term. But in order to do that, you need genuine leadership. You need people who are willing to meet and, and collaborate and, uh, and form consensus with the brilliant minds of the people in the district and set a vision for what the future of our district should look like and take constructive goals that get you, you know, constructive uh, uh, meet objectives that get you toward with those goals. That is leadership. And when you're all busy playing politics all the time and raising money for politicians all the time, that is not your work. The work of your field deputies, the work of your field offices is all focused around this whole political machine rather than doing the people's work. All right. And that is why I am running for Congress. And that is a great place to take the break we've got to take right now. Um, and uh, we will be right back with Off the Press and Wendy Reed, who has obviously got a lot of strong ideas about what the congressional district she's running for should do. <laughs> 